My eyes getting any worse. I'm a little bit complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a flashlight. Which one's first? Count your blessings. Which one is first? Is count your blessings. Yep. All righty. <clears throat> All right. Well, welcome. This is Guys Night Out at the, the uh, <laughs> Wednesday Bible Study. Uh, Brother Jerome is here. Brother Dave is here. Brother Bill is here. Uh, some other young folks are downstairs listening to uh, our Awana memorize scripture, and so that's a good thing. And, uh, we're glad you guys are here. I'm glad to be home from my travels and I'm still attempting to reconnect. Uh, let's see if it reconnects. You're live. Okay, that's all we need to know. All right, we're going to start out. Since this is um, Thanksgiving uh, month, I thought we should count our blessings. It's always good to do that. So, uh, it's him, him number one. <coughs> when upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count too many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven, nor your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. Bravo, bravo. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to join the choir. I don't think any of you guys are in the choir, but we'd love to have you. All right, let's see. Just seeing that it came up on my... It did. All right. So a couple of announcements. Um, as you might have noticed uh, from Sunday, we're receiving a special offering for CAP, Christian Appalachian Project, through the December the 6th. That's where uh, Larry and, and Phil and I were working last week. Had a great week. Uh, just uh, the house we were working on was affected by the floods. So we replaced most of the floors in this small house and it was my goodness i'm sure i've worked as hard but i've never worked harder than uh -huh. i worked last week because there were five or six layers of flooring uh, before you got and then the floor joists were all rotted it was just mm. just a very difficult 
But uh, the lady was uh, just a, a wonderful Christian woman. Uh, we prayed with her one Sunday. I don't know, somebody might have told you this Sunday. Uh, one day we prayed for her. We asked her if there was anything we could pray for her about. And she said, well, she has four sons. And one of the sons she hadn't seen in two years. She asked us to pray for this son. And she is raising his granddaughter. And he hasn't seen his daughter for two years. And so if you know that, that area, there's, there's a lot of uh, drug issues and stuff like that in that area. So anyway, we're working on her house and we prayed, we prayed for, for her son and uh, that situation. And we just, we, you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff we took out of the house and piled up next to the fence. Well, we found out that FEMA was going to take away all the stuff, which is a great blessing, except... We had to throw it over the fence. It had to be next to the road. So we, however long it took us to pile it up on one side of the fence, we had to pile it up on the other side of the fence. Mm. And then FEMA came with a big roll-on dumpster and a, uh, 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 I guess a bobcat type thing, which which mm. grabbed onto the jump and yeah, yeah. poured it in. Well, the uh, the guy who came and to do it from FEMA was actually her son. It was it was it was a miracle i mean it was just amazing and um, he came in to talk to his mother and and his daughter was there and she didn't know it, know it was him mm. but she hadn't seen it for two years so uh, we, we took that as an answer to prayer and a god thing and mm. it turned out that, that that was the last the very last fema uh taking away of the junk from the flood that was the very mm. last person because they'd run out of money mm. so we were grateful for that uh, for that blessing. So anyway, we're going to be doing a special offering for CAP through the 6th of December. Uh, Operation Christmas Child uh, is coming soon. I forget, maybe it's November the 13th. It might be this Sunday. Uh, I'll have to check on that uh, when all the boxes are due. Uh, I see the Marines left a Toys for Tots box out. Uh, he asked, uh, Brother Glenn asked me, and I said, that's it's wonderful. Anybody who'd like to contribute there, certainly welcome to do it. Um, Anja Maine would be doing a Advent wreath workshop uh, November the 21st at 6.30. Uh, that's a Monday night. And then we'll have an Advent Bible study small group on Mondays following that uh, November 28th and through uh, December 19th. So anybody who's interested in that, uh, love to have you connected to that. All right, for our devotion tonight, it's John chapter 4. We've been going through the book of John. And we just finished the account of the woman at the well of Samaria, and uh, <clears throat> which I thought was a, I just always loved that passage. And you know that the last part of that said they asked Jesus to stay, and he stayed for two days mm -hmm. uh, there uh, with them, and uh, uh, which was really unusual for Jesus. And uh, uh, and um, according to the uh, to the narrative, many uh, uh, of those folks were saved, which is a, a real blessing. So we continue the narrative then in uh, John chapter 4, uh, verse 46, and we'll just we'll read down through the end of the chapter. It's a, uh, a, another uh, miraculous event uh, by Jesus. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 43. After the two days, he left for Galilee. Now, there's a parenthetical stuff. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they had also been there. Once more he visited in Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine, and there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met with him with the news that his boy was living. 
When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus, at which Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. So uh, another uh, remarkable incident, really, uh, in, in the life of Jesus. And uh, a couple things there. Of course, we know that he, had, he spent two more days in Samaria. And what's interesting, that parenthetical statement, Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. Now, what do you think about that? Well, I think that's, I, I remember the first time I ever read that, I thought, well, that's, that's true, right? I mean, it's like uh, people who, from your hometown, they remember you as, as that kid, right? You, aren't you the troublemaker? Or Not that Jesus was a troublemaker, but, uh, you know, from his, you know, we know, t too, that he had problems in Nazareth, right? I mean, they're the ones that tried to stone him. Yeah, they said, why don't you do all those marvelous things uh, here in Nazareth that you did in Capernaum, you know, so they were kind of a little bit jealous of uh, uh, the, the miracles that he had done there. And they kind of had the expectation that he would do those same miracles here. Uh, I think uh, chronologically that event was later than this, but that principle, a prophet without honor in his own country, uh, is uh, I think that's something that John is pointing out there. So when he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him in. And they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they had also been there. Uh, remarkable, uh, Jesus healed a lot of folks uh, during his, his ministry. But the purpose in, in all of his miracles was to point people to God, right? Every person that Jesus healed later died, right? <laughs> we all, you know, we're all on that path. And... and and, and uh, it's, it's wonderful that he did those miracles physically, but the most important thing is he must be born again. And, uh, but anyway, they were, they were his credentials. They proved that he was who he said he was from God, and that opened the door for them to receive salvation. So he arrived in Galilee. The Galileans welcomed him. They had all seen what he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival. They had been there. And it's not unusual for them to travel to, uh, to Passover uh, to, uh, to Jerusalem. Um, and so he went to Canaan, Galilee. So what do you think, what do you think of when you think of Canaan, Galilee? Uh, the, wedding. the wedding feast, right? right That's, yeah. uh, and he talked about that. It's where, where he had turned the water into wine. And uh, there's a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. Capernaum was an uh, important uh, nexus for Jesus' ministry. Uh, uh, Peter's mother-in-law lived there. Uh, in fact, they stayed at her house uh, uh, more than on more than one occasion. Uh, so uh, he Wasn't visited... that a commerce hub too? What's that? Wasn't that a hub for commerce? It was. It definitely was. It was right at the north end of the Sea of Galilee, yeah. and a lot of commerce came through that area. It's very important, very busy, uh, very... Uh, uh, cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan. That's the word I was looking for. Exactly right. So uh, it was a, a bustling place, unlike you know Nazareth, which was kind of back in the uh, back in the woods. Uh, and so a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum, and uh, this man heard that Jesus arrived in Galilee from Judea. He went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, uh, who was close to death. Uh, you know, I, I think about uh, our children, and uh, I think we just do just about anything. Uh, if we could, uh, the possibility for them to be healed. And uh, you know, when our children are sick, it's, uh, it's you pull out all the stops, right? You, yeah. you do whatever you can. And uh, so what about uh, verse 48? What, Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told them, you will never believe. I, always, I, would, I don't know how Jesus said that. I, I don't know <laughs> if it was pointed and... and uh, you could read that as an angry thing. You could read that as resigned. Was a resigned, resigned thing. Yeah. Yep. And, and uh, I, I don't know. Um, probably more resigned than angry. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. I can't see him being angry over that. Uh, you know, uh, this is on more than one occasion they talk about this stuff like the Jews require a sign, but Greeks, uh, uh, you know, they, they want, you know, logic and stuff yeah. like that. So, uh, so unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told them, you will never believe. And I was about to say, you know, 40 years in the desert, right? In the wilderness. Yeah. They yeah. saw a lot of signs. They saw a lot of signs. That's right. Every day. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And and you know, um, I think the, the last chapter of John. You know, G, John said, you know, there are a lot of miracles that Jesus did. They're not even recorded. But these are recorded that that you might that you might believe. And that was the purpose. But you're right. Uh, uh, think about uh, Luke 15. You know, uh, um, uh, the rich man and Lazarus. You know, and Jesus said, uh, you know, uh, Lazarus said to Father Abraham, you know, go warn, go warn my uh, my brothers right. not to come to this place. You know, and, uh, and you remember what he said? Uh, he said, hey, they have the, 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 the law of Moses and the prophets. And if they don't believe them, they're not going to believe that even if somebody is raised from the dead. So uh, you're right. You're right about that. You're right about that. So... Uh, I can't imagine he was actually mad at the noble when he was begging for his son. No, I can't. No, no, yeah. I can't imagine him being yeah. mad either. No, yeah. uh, he may have been testing his faith in some, yeah. in some way. Well, he wanted him to go there. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it was that wasn't what the father wanted him to do. Right. Yeah. And so I think, you know, that, yeah. uh, you know, and the guy was so concerned for his son, he just knew Jesus could help, but he didn't want to let him go. You know, he wanted to bring him with him. And, yeah. 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 See it happen because he wanted yeah. to do everything good for his son, right? So, right. Uh, you know, sons in those days were very important. Very important. Very very important. Uh, absolutely. Right? Without a son, you had no legacy or place. Right. right. But uh, and you know, Jesus had to say, you know, you go ahead and go. You're, you're dismissed. He'll, he'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what if he didn't believe him? That's right. He did, but what if he didn't? Believe? What if he didn't? That's right. He, he might have lost that blessing completely. Right. Yeah. And there's another occasion similar to this uh, in in Jesus' history, you know, where uh, it was someone uh, was a nobleman or a, uh, a a centurion, you know, who came and and asked for healing for one of his servants. Right. Remember that guy? And, yeah. and uh, you know, and, and and you know, Jesus said, uh, or, or he said. No, I, I I think of I know that in 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 the Roman army, right. uh, the commander says go and you go, right. Right. and and uh, so all you have to do is say so, and I know that that it would be, and and he said you know I mean Jesus said I haven't even found this kind of faith in Israel, right, right? Yeah, right. so uh, uh, so the royal officials sir come down before my child I go, your son will live. I love this next verse, or the next part, verse 50. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. Isn't that what faith is? The man took Jesus at his word and departed. And I think that could be the secret to the whole lot of living for the Lord. Just, just trust and obey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, okay, that's what he said, that's what I'm going to do. And, and really, I think a lot of our Christian walk is that way. You know, I don't understand it all. I don't know it all. I just want to. I want to be obedient. And uh, the man took Jesus at his word and departed. Yeah, yeah. We want miracles too. We want God to tell us what to do. Right. You know, like a God telegram, just or a booming voice from on high. Right. You know, and He's already told us what to do. It's right here. All you got to do is read it. Right. But no, we we want you know. Yeah. Because there's no effort in that, right? Yeah. It's like crack, boom, okay, now I know what to do. That's right. The magic eight ball. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. We remember Naaman the leper. Right? Yeah. Naaman yeah. the leper, uh, uh, you know, he says, uh, uh, I think, it was was it Elijah? He says, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, go down and wash in the Jordan seven times uh, and, and you'll be uh, you'll be healed. Mm -hmm. uh, Miffed. He said, oh, yeah, don't. We got better rivers in my country than, <laughs> than the muddy Jordan River. Yeah. And, you know, it was his servant who, who said, look, yeah. if he had told you to do something great, that kind of goes back to what you yeah. said. Yeah. If he had told you to do something great, wouldn't you have done yeah. that? 
you know, if you had to stand on your head and, 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 <laughs> and say the alphabet backwards five times, right. you know, what, you'd have done that, right? right? How much more than he said, wash and be healed. Mm -hmm. So you're right. That's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so the man took Jesus out of his word and departed. And I love this, this kind of commentary that goes along with it. He was still on the way and the servants met him with the news that the boy was living. When he inquired as to what time his son got better, they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. What a coincidence. Is that a coincidence? No. And I think all of us can, can look at times when God's timing was just perfect, you know, when, when in our life. And uh, at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. The father realized it was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. What a great, what a great message! You know, they, uh, they they got received the healing, but they also received salvation, which is wonderful. It's yeah. the greatest thing. So, uh, and John, uh, uh, as a commentary, said this is the second time sign Jesus had performed uh, after coming from Judea to Galilee. It reminds me of the. You know the uh, the woman who uh, uh, it's the story where she wanted she wanted something and and uh, Lord said you know it's not right for the ch to give the children's bread yes, to dogs yes yes and she said yeah but he, they get the crumbs that's right you know yeah well, she wasn't the Jewess <laughs> she was um, what was she from I can't she was uh, the Syrophoenician woman she was a Greek yeah, she was Greek yeah right? so yeah. yeah you know she's a woman with the issue of blood. Right. right. She, she touched it. Oh, and then Jesus perceived that virtue had gone out from it. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. The power had gone out. From it. Yeah. So it just, you know, the way he he was sent to the lost children of Israel. So this, this, it's interesting that the commander, who was also not a Jew, mm -hmm. he wasn't sent to the commander. And yet when he said, I got this problem, Jesus said, I will go. That doesn't line up with what with the woman with the issue of blood. It doesn't line up with this one because right. he was. We're not told, but right. I assume he wasn't a Jew. I don't think so either. So um, you see that you know it's clear that Jesus was listening to the Father because he knew why he was there, and he was consistent except with the um, the, the centurion mm -hmm. who he told immediately, "I'll go." And he was probably thinking. You know, Jesus you're talking to the Father, and the Father's telling him, "Okay, this one you're going to go to." Okay, <laughs> you know, right. that's right. That's right. <laughs> Tell him you go. All righty. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's true. Just you know, it highlights to me that Jesus was the firstborn among many brothers. He he walked everything we had to walk, including baptism. He he did it all. Yep. And you know, he humbled himself to the point of being a human in every. In every way that we struggle with, and uh, you know, he listened to the Father, and which is exactly what God wants us to do. Amen. Amen. Exactly right. It's a great example, and yeah. and uh, he was, you know, and it may not always be because if he had gone, if he had thought, well, uh, I got to go to the Jews first, and then the Greeks, and you know, that, no, you just listen to the Father, right? And he'll he'll work out all those details. Right. right. He yeah. didn't, he he knew the agenda right. roughly. Right. But the details, go and take care of the details. Amen. Amen. So, Ooh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> All right. Good. Anything else? What do you think, Bill? I, I love these stories. Where, you know, it talks about Jesus healing people, and I, it's like, I just wish I could, I wish I could see it. You know? Yeah. I, mean, I don't mean like I wish I could see it, but I oh, mean no. like I wish I could watch it on YouTube. Like I watch some right, people, right. Like people just. To see the reaction. Maybe you'll have that in heaven. You know, they'll have, yeah. have, have, have the Jesus <laughs> channel. That's right. That's right. The Jesus that channel. Awesome. Wouldn't that be awesome? I think just binge watch so. that all yeah. the you know. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, just to see people's reaction, because it's a miracle, and and to see, you know, the faith suddenly, like, oh my gosh, this yeah. guy. Yeah. It's the real deal. You yeah. Know? I mean, you know, I'm not saying anything's wrong. We don't. Get to see that as much today, but uh, gosh, it'd be like if you'd have been there when when Lazarus when he said Lazarus 
you know, come forward. Oh, no. It's quite yeah. amazing that would have been, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Awesome. Just yeah. to think that the whole time, all this was planned from the beginning before man was even created. Right. Yeah. Yep. God's care of us is so intense, so consistent. Yep. And you know, intentional. In, yeah. Intentional, exactly right. the right word. Intentional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That you know, it just it, it just builds your faith to see these things. That Amen. you know, if God uh, would respond to those folks like that and mm-hmm. have that that care. Mm-hmm. Then, um, well, how, it's going to be the same for us, you know. Mm-hmm. He loves everyone exactly the same, regardless of the year in which they're born. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And it's that, you know, to him, they're all we're all alive. You know? There's no no yeah. death in Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm, that's good. I, I sort of felt, you know, an inkling of that when that when that lady's uh, son showed oh, up. Oh my goodness! Uh, you know, to, to pick up the train. Oh, yeah. It's like. Really? I, it's just amazing. You can't make that up. And, uh, and, and and God does that all the time. If we're sensitive to it, we see his yeah. hand in, yeah. in this uh, all the time. We may not be able to be there to, when Lazarus comes forth, but we see incidences in our own yeah. life where yeah. God, you yeah. know, it's, a, it's not a coincidence that these yeah. two things lined up. And uh, so that's, that's a great blessing. That's awesome. All right. Mm-hmm. Thanks, guys. Beautiful. Thank you. I always have, enjoy having you guys here. Uh, so the prayer request that we received now, Miss uh, uh, Diana sends me all the prayer requests from the last prayer meeting, which was like two weeks ago. So okay. this is prayer requests over the last two weeks that was sent out. Uh, so there's some updates, and, and uh, I talked to Sonny Combs on the way in today. She's downstairs listening uh, to the Iwana kids. Uh, but her son, her daughter Lynn, uh, who we pray for, Lynn Deal, uh, is having a heart catheterization on Ooh. Friday. So Ooh. remember uh, Lynn as you pray. And she also asked us to pray for her friend, uh, Sonny's friend Stacy, uh, is having back problems, uh, and she's getting uh, back injections in her back for for the pain. I told her we definitely remember her. Uh, Miss Doris is not feeling well, so remember Doris. Uh, Hopefully she's uh, better soon. I hope she doesn't give it to you, Brother Jerome. And... She said I gave it to her. Oh, she did. <laughs> okay. All right, then. I'm not going to touch You're her. supposed to be getting people, right? <laughs> um, we we got to... some online. Oh, have... oh, good. Thanks for noticing that. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, I'll get down to the end. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you to share those. Uh, got a, uh, you probably guys probably saw this uh, praise from Iris Lehman. We've been praying for her granddaughter Katie mm-hmm. having knee issues. Yeah. And she said, uh, great news to share today because all of your prayers, the orthopedic uh, reported that Katie's knee is healing. He said the pain she is, she is in is because of it's overused. Which, of course, Katie's like 18 years old you know, mm-hmm. and high school student. Very a lot of activity there. She said, our family is so grateful for God's healing mm. for a praying church. Lots of love and gratitude, Iris. Uh, Helen Lillard did have her surgery. I talked to her today. She's at home. She's at home. Uh, she's having, I asked her how she was. She said she's very sore, uh, but she doesn't have the pain that she felt that took her in there and that she's had for the last six or eight months. So that's a praise. And so, no, her daughter uh, uh, is there. Rose is there with her, and she also wanted us to pray for her son Randy, who is uh, uh, recovering from back surgery. He has some pretty serious back issues as well. Uh, a request from Robin Murphy uh, requested prayer for Alexa and Shane. Uh, a life situation causing Alexa anxiety. Uh, and so we need to pray for her battle with anxiety and Shane uh, as he loves and supports his wife. So let's pray for Alexa and Shane, uh, newly was. Uh, this request from Chrissy Mossberg uh, for my husband Bill. It had a cardio version. Right. And uh, which I understand the procedure was good, but you still have to have some, but, but I'm packing any food, so. Heart thought as fast as it was, so but it, they got a specialist guy coming up this in January and probably sometime in the spring they'll take me in for a ablation. Ablation, ablation yeah. Okay. Which I had one 20 years ago, so 
I can go and get a couple of car batteries and fix shit. <laughs> That's kind of what they did. The first. It's kind of like that. Yeah. Because yeah, our daughter-in-law, Jill, had an ablation. Yeah. And it was a chemical ablation okay. where they stopped her heart. Oh, wow. With this chemical, whatever Ooh. it is. Uh, I forget the name of it. And and then started, they, they and they burnt these two areas. Okay. Which supposedly stopped a electrical impulse. Yeah. And it, but she had to have it twice. Hmm. So yeah. It's like you're, you're, it grows and you get like a short. A yep. short. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's like a hmm. electrical short. You know, yeah. Messes up the system. So it's amazing, amazing how the heart works. So. It is. It is. So we'll be uh, looking forward to that for you oh, yeah. in the springtime. Yes. Uh, request from Michelle Eastdale. And I asked. I needed to ask. I didn't ask Michelle about this. I saw her here. First, my stepmom, Jan, admitted to the hospital with dehydration, confusion, and respiratory issues. Now, she's been going, undergoing a round of chemo. So uh, pray, for, uh, pray for Jan, and I pray that she's well. And I understand also that Kevin uh, is on training. He's doing training now. He'll be gone for a while, so pray he's, for I think he's got to stay, man. Oh, he did? Yeah, uh, good. It didn't cancel all together. They were his higher up so his circumstance with his mother, his stepmother, stepmother and him. Uh, uh, they have you know, the age of the same time. Right. And so they just kind of put him on hold until. Okay. Well, day. good. I didn't know that. Okay. It's okay. Like that's what it was. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Sunday morning. Good. Good. That's a phrase then. Keep them in your prayer. Uh, request from Chris Mossberg. Lift up Gracie, a new believer who's having heart complications. Yeah. So remember that. Uh, request from Jenny Freeburn. Jenny uh, used to be a member here. Uh, she said during a pre-op physical for neck surgery, uh, it, is, it was discovered that I may have had a heart attack sometime recently. Uh, prayers would be appreciated, but that's not what I'm asking. She says, my brother is not saved. He has been ugly to everyone in his family to the point that his son is not speaking to him. I'm asking everyone to pray for his salvation. Uh, if I should die, it would be heartbreaking to me that my brother would spend eternity in hell. Yeah. So uh, thank you all who pray. His name is Bill Freeburn. So uh, remember uh, Bill and also Jenny. Uh, prayers from Tanja about Ed. Ed had, has had back surgery. Uh, I saw him Sunday night, and he's uh, he's doing much, much better. So uh, thankful for that uh, request. And uh, he's at home doing PT, so that's good. Uh, Phil Brudner uh, said, I'd like to put my grandson Derek on the prayer list. Uh, perforated appendix, which they operated on, but recently found two abscesses on his abdomen, which might require surgery. It's only three years old, and it's been in the hospital for over a week. Uh, the update was, uh, thank you for your prayers. He was released from the hospital two days ago, able to take out the drainage tube. Spirits are good. The doctor said he should heal well, so that's a blessing. Uh, Prayer from uh, request from Roger for Flo. That, of course, that was two weeks ago. Uh, Flo is at home and it seems to be doing well, so that's good. Uh, she, uh, Nancy Wright requested prayer for her, uh, her brother-in-law, Mike Villing, and his sis her sister, uh, Debbie. Mike had a fall on Monday. <clears throat> he missed a step getting off a trailer. Uh, wisdom for the doctors and healing for him. They're preparing to move to another state. So pray for Mike and Debbie. Um, and I had a prayer request for my travels to Arkansas for the funeral of Brother Roger Stewart. I'm grateful for safe travels there and pray for his family. Uh, and uh, also um, thankful for the, uh, the CAP outreach and safety there. Uh, so that's good. Um, Chris Mossberg also uh, lift up Rick in prayer, a friend that we just found out has a rare type of cancer. Yeah. So uh, pray for Rick. And uh, uh, also for Beth Grant, who has an aneurysm. And remember Brother Chris, he's, uh, he's in California. Yeah. And uh, uh, so just pray for him as, he, as he's out there. Uh, Roger Vincent's son, Matt, and his young daughter who live in Maine. Uh, they have COVID. Uh, hopefully uh, they're better by now. That was a couple weeks ago that we received that. All right, brother Dave, what do we got? Anybody? Uh, Diana Croft says, uh, pray for her cousin Gene. He 
He's been sent home under hospice care. And uh, Doris says, uh, pray for Coach Parker, who is in a nursing home in Westminster. And also pray for her sister-in-law, Janie. She says she's having a rough time. Uh, and uh, she wants us to pray for her salvation. For Janie's salvation. Yes. Yeah, I think she hit a low the other day when we got down there. Okay. And we kind of witnessed to her. Hmm. This is going to be a little bit lower. Okay. Well, thank you, brother. Mark, do you have any requests for prayer? Um, for my sister-in-laws. <coughs> One for Syl, and she's going to have a stent procedure in a couple weeks. Pray for that. I love her. And uh, also for my sister-in-law, Marie. She has... Um, some procedures come up as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you, brother. All right. So uh, we've kind of begun on our prayer nights of kind of praying through the Psalms uh, and just kind of uh, bowing our heads and and uh, listening to uh, to a Psalm and, and thinking about that in, in in terms of prayer and the uh, attributes of God and. And so tonight we're going to read Psalm 1. And uh, so uh, if you will, just bow with me and, and uh, I'll read Psalm 1 and then we'll, uh, then we'll have prayer for, uh, for these requests. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff at, that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Lord, we just, uh, we come to you tonight, Lord, grateful. I'm grateful for these men who have joined us for prayer, Bible study tonight and prayer, and, and uh, uh, thankful for uh, this psalm uh, that we know that we, we delight in your word and help us, Lord, uh, as we grow in you, that we would just lean into your word and, uh, and that we would be faithful to what your word teaches us. Thank you for the, the lesson from John about the, uh, uh, the healing of, uh, of this man's son and his faith, where he, uh, he, he took what you said and was obedient. And Father, help us in our walk that we might be obedient as we as we serve you and we may not always understand everything but but we can be obedient and we can we can hear what you say and do it we can trust and obey uh, the things that you ask us to do father i ask you to bless all the requests that were made for prayer tonight <coughs> and i know it's been a while since we were together and a lot of these requests have have uh, been over time but uh, father we know that uh, uh, that you care about each one just as you cared about this uh, uh, this man's son in our text tonight. And Father, I, I pray for Sonny's daughter, Lynn, whom we love. And we know that she's having, she has a lot of medical issues, Lord, that she's fighting uh, for many, many years. And she's having a heart cath on Friday. And I just pray, Lord, uh, that it's uh, effective, uh, that it, it gives good information that the doctors are able to act upon. And Father, that, uh, that, that that you'll be with her and, and your your grace would cover her. And also for Stacy, who's having back problems and is having pain injections, Lord, and I just pray that uh, they'll be effective. And Lord, I pray for Miss Doris, who's uh, sick, not with us tonight. And we pray that you'll lay your healing hand upon her, Lord, that she would uh, she would be well soon. Yes, Father, I, I pray for Iris, his uh, granddaughter, Katie, so grateful that <clears throat> her knee is healing and, and we give you the glory for that and continue to bless 
uh, the Lehman family, Lord, and, I, and I'm grateful for Katie and her parents and her brothers. And Lord, uh, I just, uh, uh, I pray your uh, blessing and grace be upon them. Thank you, Lord, for Miss Helen's good news. Yes, Lord, uh, for that healing of her uh, uh, and successful surgery. And I pray that she'd continue to heal from that surgery and she'd be returned to us soon. And yes. I pray for uh, her son, Randy, yes. who's healing from surgery, Lord. And I pray that you'd strengthen him and that he'd be able to go back uh, uh, to the to the work that he does, Lord. And, and I pray that you'd recover him from that. Uh, I pray for uh, uh, Alexa and Shane, Lord, you know the uh, the battles that they're fighting and, and uh, I pray, Lord, for your peace uh, and uh, that their, their hearts and minds would be stayed upon you and you, we know, Lord, that you would not let them down. Uh, Father, uh, thankful for Bill's uh, procedure, but Lord, we're prayerful as he goes forward for this ablation, Father, that, uh, that you'll uh, carry him through to that time and, and when the time comes, uh, that it would be successful, Lord, and I pray that you'd bless him in that. And I pray for Kevin and Michelle, uh, for Jan, <coughs> Lord, uh, for healing for her, for uh, restoration and, and effectiveness of treatment. Uh, I pray for Michelle as she continues her pregnancy, Lord, and I pray that all would be well. And bless Kevin as he ministers to his family. We're grateful for them. Uh, Father, I pray for Brother Chris Mossberg, and, and as he travels to California, Lord, just be with him and open doors according to your will for him. And I pray for the request that he made for Gracie, Lord, a new believer. Uh, Father, I pray that you come near to her and encourage her. She has these heart complications. And I pray your healing touch would be upon her. Father, for Miss Jenny Freeburn, uh, uh, she's a, a true believer, a, yes. a great child of God. And uh, Lord, I pray for her health uh, that she mentioned, Lord. And uh, I pray that you just... Uh, lay your healing hands upon her but especially for her her son uh, bill well, i'm sorry her brother her brother bill who's not saved and i feel her heart about his salvation lord that she would uh, doesn't want him to spend eternity separated from you and i, I just pray lord for his salvation uh, thank you for ed uh, main's uh, surgical procedure that it went well lord continue to bless him as he recovers and i pray for Tanya as well uh, she's uh, probably needing some uh, uh, surgery uh, in the coming days as well. And I just pray you bless her and just watch over Ed and Tanja and their family. I'm grateful for them. And Lord, I'm, I'm grateful for Phil Brudner's uh, grandson, Derek, his healing and that he's out of the hospital. Continue to grow in Lord and, and bless his parents as they raise him. And I pray that all will be well. Uh, pray for Roger. Uh, uh, for Flo and, and uh, grateful that she's doing better and continue to bless them and uh, Lord I just uh, I want to pray for them as they minister to uh, uh, to Derek and, and these little uh, these young people that they're uh, uh, doing uh, uh, teaching uh, uh, they're doing one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one teaching for these guys and I know that they're very much appreciated I pray for Nancy's uh, uh, brother-in-law Mike and his sister her sister Debbie and you know Mike uh, fell and I just pray that he would be well and, and able to, to make the travel plans that he needs to do and Father, Father I pray for the Stewart family the passing of brother Roger uh, your faithful servant Lord who you called home and Lord I pray for Gina his wife and his sons and uh, his grandchildren Lord I just pray that, that you comfort them as only you can I pray for uh, Chris's uh, friend, Rick, uh, uh, who has a rare type of cancer, Lord. And I know that uh, that's not too big for you, Lord, that you can do all things. And I, I pray according to your will, uh, if it's at your will, that it would be healed, Lord, that you could do that. And whatever your will is, Lord, I pray that you comfort uh, Rick and, and uh, <coughs> bless those that are caring for him. Also for Beth, who has an aneurysm, Lord, and I pray for for healing and grace there. Uh, for Roger's son, Matt, and his younger daughter who have had COVID, and I pray that they're they're doing much better. Uh, Father, I pray for uh, uh, Diana's cousin, Jean, who's uh, in hospice care, Lord, and I just pray for uh, uh, comfort for that family. And, and uh, Father, I pray for your will to be done. Thank you for hospice workers who do such a good job. and, and uh, uh, Lord, we're grateful for, for, for their loving care. 
Uh, I pray for Coach Baker. Lord, you know the situation there. I pray for your grace and uh, your healing there. I pray for uh, uh, for Janie, uh, um, her sister-in-law, for uh, Brother Jerome's sister. And I pray for her salvation, Lord. I know that she uh, just, just lost her husband, and it's a very difficult time. And I pray, Lord, that in the midst of uh, of, uh, of trouble and, and trial and tribulation that, that your light of grace and hope would shine to her and that she'd reach out to you and trust you for her salvation. Uh, Father, I pray for Mark's uh, family, his sister-in-law, Sil, uh, who will be having a, a stamp place. Lord, I pray for the effectiveness of that and that all would be well. And Father, you know Marie, and, and uh, I pray uh, she's going to be having some medical procedures. And I just pray for peace there. Uh, that passes understanding, Lord. Just give her your grace uh, as she navigates this path. And Lord, I just pray that uh, uh, in the midst of that uh, of those trials, that you would be clearly seen and followed. Lord, we love you. We, we thank you for loving us. Uh, thank you for giving us this time to pray together. We thank you for uh, the opportunity to pray, the, uh, uh, the privilege of praying together. And we know, Lord, that there's power in the prayers of your people. So we thank you for that privilege. Uh, bless us uh, as we depart this place. Thank you for Awana and all of our leaders who are, uh, you know, it's just great to hear those uh, those lively voices and, and we know that they're hearing about Jesus and uh, that just blesses our hearts, Lord, that we can plant the seeds of the gospel in their lives uh, at this young age. And I pray that it comes to fruition. Thank you, Lord, for our church family and, and bring us back uh, on Sunday to worship you, Lord, and to give you glory for you're worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. All right. So uh, we're going to close out in prayer, Brother Mark. I'm going to give you a... Our, um, we, we already prayed. We're going to sing. All right. Give me the words. All right. There's the words. And we, we, someone said we might have done this a couple of weeks ago. There's a solo for the last guy in. There's so. a solo. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. 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 I'm sure he sounds much better than me. <laughs> All right. This is a great hymn called I Shall Know Him. When my life work is ended and I cross the swelling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side, and His smile will be the first to welcome me. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeemed by His side I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, by the print of the nails in His hand. Oh, the soul-thrilling rapture when I view His blessed face, and the luster of His kindly beaming eye. How my full heart will praise Him for the mercy, love, and grace that prepared for me a mansion in the sky. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeemed by His side I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, by the print of the nails in His hand. Through the gates to the city in a robe of spotless white, He will lead me where no tears will ever fall. In the glad song of ages I shall mingle with delight, Come to my Savior first of all. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeemed by His side I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, by the print of the nails in His hand. 
Amen. You know, when Diana plays the songs for you, you have coverage when you have to take a breath because the piano covers up all those mistakes. You know, breathing, swallowing. <laughs> let me just add a, another prayer request to you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we were privileged on Sunday to go to Debbie Stad's church, Marsh Road Baptist right. Church. Right. Her dad uh, celebrated right. 55 years of right. the ministry there. And uh, we're so grateful to do that. Number one, pray for their church. They're looking for a pastor because she's going to retire. Oh, and uh, he'll be 89 years old this, uh, wow, this goodness. Uh, wow. November. And uh, he's running out of gas. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, so uh, pray for Brother Shepherd and for Marshboro Church. Marsh I know they appreciate you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. That's all we got. Uh -huh. Thanks for being here, dudes. This is Ben's night. All right. Really want to turn off the, the machine. The machine?